I'm a park ranger for a state park and the Pennsylvania Game Commission. I was working one day and something I've never seen before stared me down as I was hiking to a remote campsite. I have never seen a deer act like they did. They were terrified unlike anything I've seen in behavior. I have seen coyotes and even bear, but this was something different. I've heard the term dogman before reading this, and after speaking to a fellow Native American friend, he said he had heard of similar creatures. I have to say that the incident, I have been followed a couple of times. I'm only writing this to you because my father said that I will be helped by reaching out to somebody who knows what they're talking about. I have vowed to carry a weapon with me every time I go out, even on personal occasions. If you decide to read this, maybe your audience can offer some advice. I was staying at a cave hut in Wales on my own once, and had a pretty creepy experience. I stay at very remote cave huts a lot, but never before on my own. This cave hut is huge, it used to be ten terraced miners' cottages, and has dozens of bunk rooms and common rooms downstairs. It's utterly remote, and it doesn't have any curtains or blinds, so there's no way of telling if anyone is looking in the windows when it's dark. Not that that's very likely, given the remoteness of the place, but I did get a shock when I saw the glowing eyes of some sheep looking in the kitchen window at me. There's no phone reception, no neighbors, and it's halfway up a Welsh mountain. There is a payphone in the conference room, but it's supposed to be for emergencies, cave rescue callouts, etc., and I didn't even know how to turn it on. This place is so creepy that they used it as a set for one of the episodes of Torchwood. Countryside, the episode about the cannibalistic Welsh villagers. I'm a fairly rational person, but I was definitely getting myself a bit worked up once it went dark. The sheep incident particularly scared the bejesus out of me. But the bit of the hut I find spookiest, apart from the curtainless windows, is the bunk rooms upstairs. Because the hut was converted from ten cottages, there's no main hallway either upstairs or downstairs, and all the rooms connect in a rambly, circular sort of way. Most of the bunks are triple height, so there's pretty much no way to see all of a room at once, and the lights go off on a timer. I picked a bottom bunk in a room that had double-width bunk beds and went to bed early. I'm woken up at about 2 a.m. by very loud banging coming from the radiator pipes, which are right by my head. I initially panic, but convince myself that it's either the heating coming on or else another group of cavers has arrived very late and are having showers or cooking. Due to the size of the place, there could well be another group that I hadn't heard arrive. So I go back to sleep. About an hour later, I am woken up again by more banging. But this time it's more like wood on wood, and it's coming from the ceiling. It's almost like someone wearing boots, stamping on the wood of the attic floor above me. This time I nearly shit myself. The only thing that stopped me leaving the room was the thought of all those spooky dark bunk rooms outside my room. Eventually it stopped, and somehow I went back to sleep. It's only when I woke up the next morning that I realized that there was no way the pipe noise could have been the heating, because it's never turned on. No other people have arrived overnight either, so that rules that out. That morning, a few local cavers come up to the hut, and I get talking to one of them about what I heard. He tells me that he had a similar experience in that room. He's a very superstitious person and instantly accepted that it was a ghost or similar in the attic. I'm much more skeptical. So he decided to go up into the attic and investigate what was up there. Even though I'm a skeptic, what he said next sent shivers down my back. The attic room up above that room is not boarded, meaning that there's no way a ghost could have been stamping on the floor in the attic. So the only rational explanation, in his opinion, was that it was actually stamping, or banging, on the ceiling of the bunk room. The bunk room I was asleep in. I've never stayed at that hut alone again, and I've never slept in that particular bunk room. Edit. Sorry this turned into a bit of an essay, I'd forgotten just how scary this particular experience was. I grew up on about 10 acres. Not big, but with other people's property having acreage around me. It was a lot bigger of an area nobody was around. It was all wooded too. 
Well, besides two acres for the house and yard. Anyways, I'm like five playing outside and my neighbor and his friend walk over. They were roughly 13 and came over all the time to see my brother and sister. They walk up and say, Hey, you know something's in your bushes, right? Confused and curious, we walk outside, expecting a normal deer or elk to walk out. Nope. A man walks up all bloody, high as shit middle of the day. We all run inside, lock the doors and try and hide so he doesn't see us. As we call 911. The police eventually come get him after he breaks a glass door panel and almost gets in. I'm still scared of the dark. Even though I am a mother, I am not afraid to admit I'm scared of the dark from it. My brother always made jokes about it growing up. A few buddies and I decided to drive from Colorado down to Arizona one year. Since there were four of us, we decided to just leave in the evening and drive through the night so we could be in Arizona by the next afternoon. So we are making decent time, headed through New Mexico, and start to realize the gas is a bit low and we haven't really seen anything for a while. Usually you see at least a sign every couple miles telling you how far it is to the next set of stores, gas stations, or fast food places, but we haven't noticed any and the tank is getting super low. Finally, we saw one random sign indicating that there is a gas station about a mile off a pull off a bit ahead, but we are all a bit stressed because the needle is basically below empty this point, and we are in the middle of nowhere New Mexico literally just pitch black, but you can see the outlines of the low hills from the moonlight. Not too freaky, but whatever. So we pull off at the exit that the sign says and drive a ways, which felt like a lot more than a mile basically now wondering what the hell we are going to do if we run out of gas that we are off the highway. We finally see a light up ahead and can tell it's a gas station, but as we pull up we notice a few weird things. First, the only lights are the street lamp next to the gas station, and the fridge lights inside at the back of the gas station convenience store, no indoor lights, nothing else, and of course the fridge lights are like old yellowish creepy as hell lights that those old fridges have. It's clearly a very old gas station, only two pumps, no prices, and just had an extremely weird vibe about it. Finally, the creepiest thing about it was that there were four cars in the parking lot, older model sedans and a pickup, just sitting there. No lights, nothing else. We pulled up to it and paused in the street just sitting there, and I think all four of us just knew we should not get out of the car, and that we should leave immediately the combination of the Erie gas station the four parked cars with no one in sight, and the creepy New Mexico rolling hills just creeped all of us out. Without any of us saying a word, we flipped a U-turn and headed back to the highway, praying that we at least made it that far in case we needed to hitchhike to get some gas. By some miracle, we made it up the road another couple miles to another pull-off with an actual big-name gas station. Somehow we ended up pumping more gas than the car's manual indicated it had capacity for. And even at that gas station, there was some creepy trucker just sitting at the pump next door watching us from his cab. In the Appalachian Mountains, August of 1990, I, 17-year-old Jamie, decided I needed an adventure. With a heavy heart and a desire to escape, I sneaked away from my home in Minnesota and embarked on a bus ride bound for Florida. However, halfway there in North Carolina, a change of heart led me to retrace my steps and head back home. Unfortunately, the next bus wouldn't depart for two days, leaving me stranded with no place to stay. Determined to make the most of the situation, I decided to camp out in the Great Smoky Mountains. Equipped with a bullwhip and a machete, I felt prepared to face the wilderness and any wildlife I might encounter. Little did I know that what awaited me in those dark woods was something beyond my wildest nightmares. In the dead of night, around 1 one thirty in the morning, a terrifying sound jolted me awake. Instinctively, I grabbed my bullwhip, scanning the area for any signs of danger. The noise grew closer, and my heart pounded with fear as I noticed shadows moving in the bushes. Then my eyes met the creature's its eyes a sickly yellow, unmistakably monstrous. 
My adrenaline surged as I realized I was being hunted. My fear was overwhelming, but I knew I had to defend myself. The creature's reptilian appearance, with ridges on its head and talon-like hands, sent shivers down my spine. I snapped my bullwhip at it, but to my horror, it effortlessly snatched and destroyed it. Panic overtook me, and I ran as fast as my legs could carry me, desperate to create distance between myself and whatever nightmarish being lurked in those woods. With my heart still racing, I sought refuge by diving into a cold mountain stream, hoping to put some distance between me and the creature, uncertain if it could swim or not. As I emerged on the other side of the river, I continued walking for hours, my mind reeling from the traumatic encounter. Eventually, fate led me to cross paths with the Cherokee native man. Exhausted and bruised, I mustered the courage to ask for a ride back to the bus station. As we drove, he saw the state I was in and inquired about what had happened. I hesitated, wondering if I would be dismissed as crazy. After a long pause, I decided to share my harrowing encounter with the creature in the woods. To my surprise, the man didn't dismiss me or question my sanity. Instead, he spoke with a quiet knowing and simply said, You're lucky you only ran into the one. Let's go. There was no need for further explanation. We both understood the inexplicable nature of what I had faced. In the safety of his presence, I reflected on the encounter that had forever changed me. I couldn't help but wonder about the mysteries hidden within the vast expanse of the Appalachian Mountains mysteries beyond our understanding, perhaps best left undisturbed. I had sought adventure, but what I found was an unimaginable terror that would haunt my dreams for years to come. I spend a lot of time hunting by myself in the American Southwest, mainly Arizona. I am always armed, and this story will explain why. I was three days into a week-long predator hunt. I mainly hunt coyote, but also by a mountain lion permit, as they frequent the area and often respond to my predator calls. I awoke one night in my camp to voices around the perimeter of my camp. They were all in Spanish and in a hushed tone, but in the desert, noise travels very far. I was sleeping in my pickup truck camper, but had the windows open for ventilation. I awoke to the voices and quietly readied my sidearm in case they were smugglers or someone looking to rob me. I waited for what felt like hours in the darkness, but really was maybe 20 minutes. After a time, I decided to investigate instead of fall back asleep. As quietly as I could, I put on my boots and grabbed my rifle and peered around me. The moon was half full and the sky clear so I could see a great distance around me. I saw four figures huddled around the remains of my campfire using it to heat some sort of pot or can as food or water. I waited inside my truck, trying not to move as I didn't know their intentions. After about a half hour they quietly moved on in the northern direction, but I never fell back asleep. I waited until dawn before going back to sleep and reported them to the border patrol agent on my way out of the range. I never saw any footprints or signs that they were even there the next morning, only a small depression in my fire where their pot or can had sat. Other than that they were gone without a trace. I assumed they were just people crossing the border illegally to find work or trafficking drugs, but I never knew for certain. I shuddered to think what would have happened if I had confronted them as I don't know if they were armed or not. I don't go hunting alone anymore. I live in Finland, most sparsely populated country in Europe. Over 70% of the country is forest. So me and my friends have just recently got a moped driving license, as we are 15 now. We thought it would be fun to drive to this huge ass forest to camp. The forest is like very big, maybe over 30 kilometers or more till the other town. So we drive there, there are three of us we set a camp and just chill out. After some phone watching and campfire roasted sausage eating, we go for a little ride. The clock is about 20 or 8 p.m. They hop on their dirt bikes, me on my scooter. Scooter, perfect for forest driving. We are like three kilometers out in the forest driving these little forestry roads until strangely, we can't hear any birds singing no more. 
At this point I should probably mention that at this part in Finland where I live, it doesn't get dark at night in summer at all. So anyways it is literally silent. We shut down our bikes and stare at each other. We were there for a couple of minutes and then just started driving again. At some point we heard a scream. Not big but little. Well that's just a fox, the forest is full of those. We continue. The road ends at this point and I said that we need to turn back. I'm not going to the forest with my scooter. And now we hear the scream. It is so close that we all literally jump. We try to start our engines like crazy and drive out fast. Remember, even though the clock is now like 21, it is not dark at all. So we drive as fast as we can, and then I see it. Actually, we all see it. A white man just standing in the forest looking at us. It looked just like others have pictured it at the sub. The creature just looked at us as we drove past it, and nothing crazy happened. Fast forward, the clock is almost midnight, and we are laughing and eating some candy. Suddenly we heard loud banging noise. I still don't know where it came from, cause in the forest there is nothing that makes that kind of noise. It was like banging on metal. We were scared and moved to our tents. We were there for another hour or something like that. Then we want to go to sleep. We do our usual things before bed. Eat, brush our teeth, etc. As I'm taking a piss near a tree, I see this man again. And it is so scary. Like it was almost 2.5 meters long, I'd say. It just looked at me from the forest, and I see it so clear. Like every detail. It was white, had a ugly-looking skin, its eyes were black, and long hands. It had no hair at all. I literally almost started to cry and shouted for for them. I explained that the same guy we saw earlier was there. For some reason they didn't care at all. So we just go to sleep, even though I couldn't sleep almost at all. There was almost no action at night, unless. I suddenly woke up to my moped being on. I looked out in the F. My moped was running, I don't know no for how long it had ran. One of my friends woke up at almost the same time as me and walked out of his tent. He was confused and laughed and just said, Why are you driving at like 5 a.m.? I just said I don't know, was I sleepwalking? Well I still don't know what caused this, I don't really believe some humanoid guy can start a moped, but it seems like it can. We just left at the morning, and my friends reported that they had been hearing strange noises trough at the night. I don't know, I guess I'm not gonna go there again. I'm not really scared too, I'm just confused, even though I was so scared when I saw it. Sorry I'm bad at writing. For about a month now, every time I leave my boyfriend's house late at night between 12 and 4 a.m., which is quite often, I hear rustling in the forest next to his place. The first time it happened, we both heard it, but saw nothing. I asked him if it was a deer, but the land next to his house is an incredibly steep slope and fenced in, so not sure why a deer would be right on the edge of the tree line. I was not scared at this point. The next few times creeped me out a bit. The rustling was accompanied by bigger and taller branches breaking as whatever it is scurried away. For context, his kitchen is right beside the forest and has large windows all around, so you can see into it pretty easily. At this point, I wasn't sure what to make of it. Around the fifth or sixth time, I had asked him if he had seen anything else, and he mentioned that the night before as I walked away, he spotted a creature stretched low to the ground, pale, long, and weirdly shaped limbs. He mentioned that it moved strangely, and he had no idea what it was. My boyfriend is very skeptical, so he kind of laughed at me when I kept asking him questions about the creature's appearance. The next night it happened once more. Except this time, as I got in my car to drive home, I was hit with the worst feeling of absolute dread and the most gut-wrenching nausea I had ever experienced. I hadn't eaten anything unusual, and it was so random I wasn't sure what to make of it. I've never felt dread, panic, or nausea all at once like this before and I have encountered some near-death experiences. The only other unusual thing that has been happening is I have been hearing a weird high-pitched screech, frequency that is coming from that forest area. 
There's no farmland or anything else near. It's not coming from inside the house. I haven't seen the creature myself, so all I have to go off of is my boyfriend's depiction. But given he doesn't believe in anything otherworldly or aside from the norm, I'm choosing to trust it. The creature making these sounds from the forest every single night has to be pretty big, because it hits branches that are high up and causes a pretty big ruckus when it scurries away. Any ideas what I could be dealing with? I will say I haven't heard it the last few times. I haven't changed anything, except maybe leaving a bit earlier. This sighting occurred near Blackstone in Brunswick County, Virginia. It happened in May at 2 o'clock in the morning. The location is an area of the resident's backyard where he's got woods that are alongside a soybean field. The witness and his son were outside armed with a pistol and a shotgun. They were checking for what had made a heavy thud sound at the back of their house. They thought it might be a burglar or a bear, especially since something had been causing trouble around their property for the past two years. This is what the witness stated in his report. I saw a deer run as if it was being chased. Then I saw a huge figure step out of the woods. This thing was at least eight feet tall. I screamed out to this thing to stop. It moved toward us running. I told my son to shoot. He shot in its direction. Then it ran to my left flank and continued to run toward us. We ran back towards the house. I was in terror because the thing was shaped like a man, but it was covered with hair. I stopped and watched it walk into the light from the house. It was huge, and there was an odor that really stunk. It stayed in sight for about five minutes before it walked into the woods. There was follow-up report from a local investigator, D, who confirmed the event with the sun. He said it was too dark to see well, but he could clearly hear loud, heavy running footsteps coming towards them. The witness also said it made a huffing noise and a shrieking sound when his son shot his gun. The thing rapidly approached the father and son and stopped just 15 feet short of where the witness stood. In the seconds before the witness turned and ran back to his house, he saw a massive creature four feet wide that dropped from two legs to a three-point crouch placing one hand on the ground. While it was too dark to make out the details of the face, he felt he could see well enough to discern a surprised look on the creature's face. It looked at him panting heavily at this point. The man and son ran back to their house where his wife was. She told DK that her husband's face was blanched white with a look of terror and for some time he was unable to verbalize clearly. When he had calmed down enough to tell her what he'd seen, he could only describe it as a big hairy demon. When the witness investigated the area, the next day there were 18 to 20 inch long footprints in the field. He also found long brown and gray hair in the woods behind his home. This isn't the first time strange things have happened at his property. There had been several occurrences of what we would call possible Bigfoot activity that he had attributed to people messing around on his property. Something had been pounding on the walls of his home and throwing rocks at his family and onto his roof. On many occasions, heavy things like a riding lawnmower or trailer had been moved overnight. There had also been loud howls coming out of the woods at night. Their young daughter had claimed to see a hairy man outside a window, but the witness didn't believe her at the time. This was prior to him having this actual visual encounter where he saw this creature just 15 feet away from him. Also, the witness may have seen this creature before but attributed to activity associated to nearby Fort Pickett, an Army National Guard maneuver training center. One evening, he saw what he thought was a very large guardsman wearing a backpack and a ghillie suit walking along the road in front of his house. The second time, about a year later when he saw the figure again, he called out to the figure and it began walking fast until it turned into the woods along the road and disappeared. What makes this account even more interesting is that there were two reports coming out of Fort Pickett by soldiers who were training there. Both incidents occurred during the course of the same day, about two weeks prior to this witness encounter. DK spent several nights camping out on the resident's property, later confirming unusual howling and movement in the woods that he believes was a Bigfoot.
so I don't typically believe this kind of stuff. But I had a very strange encounter a little while back that I was telling my coworker about, and they insisted I saw a rake. I've been doing some research since I had no idea what it was, and it looks very similar to what I saw, except from what I've read it's a fictional creature from a creepypasta. Just learned about that too, so I'm not sure what I saw. Anyway, I was driving home from work about a month or so ago, and was heading down this typically busy side street in Douglas County, Colorado, called Havana. It's kind of close to the Centennial Airport, in a business district, surrounded by apartments. It was about 1.30 a.m., and there wasn't a lot of traffic out, just a jeep in front of me. As I was driving around a bend in the road, where Dry Creek turns into Havana, I saw in my peripheral this figure to my right by the sidewalk standing between two small trees held up by wire supports. The creature was standing kind of behind them. At first glance, I figured it was just a big slender dog like a white greyhound or great dame that escaped and seemed to be standing and barking at traffic by the sidewalk. I was going about 45 miles per hour when I passed, and it was dark out, but noticed as I began to pass by that it appeared to have a humanoid-shaped head with black eyes, a bent-over hunched back, long slender legs, and an unusually wide-stretched mouth like it was screaming or something. I thought to myself, yo, WTF was that? So I slowed down quickly to look back, and in my mirror I saw the creature turn around and run off towards a fence or brick retaining wall on the other side of the sidewalk. But as it ran off, I saw how tall and slender the creature was. It seemed very pale, almost gray, with a kind of anorexic and bony appearance. It also moved strangely, where its hind leg joints were inverted and bent in the opposite direction from its front legs. At that point, I was seriously creeped out. The jeep in front of me had also slowed down, so I could only assume they saw it too. We both continued driving as it was late, early and couldn't stop in the middle of a busy road. But that situation really made my skin crawl. I kept checking my mirrors for the rest of the drive home and debating if I should have called a non-emergency line to have an officer check it out. But I told myself they would think I was just an idiot. Now, every night when I take that road, I look around to see if I can spot it again. I really want to believe it was just a dog, but I can't stop thinking about how strange and quickly it moved with its backwards knees and how long, wide its mouth stretched. I haven't talked about this much except to some family and my coworker, because, quite frankly, it just sounds ridiculous. I'm just wondering WTF I actually saw, and if it's something I should even be talking about. Or if I should continue to pretend I never saw anything and just move on with my life. The other night my sister and I were riding to our friends in our golf cart. She was driving, I was on the passenger seat. As we neared a stretch of woods I looked over to the woods in my mind I assumed it was a deer within 0.1 seconds, yet this was no deer. I literally screamed out of fear without realizing as something on all fours that looked like a human on all fours but wasn't ran into the woods. This thing was white and looked like a human running on all fours but much faster and not human if that makes sense. Later that night we were parked by our friends and I believe something was watching us. As we kept hearing sticks snapping and cracking from the woods and I felt weirded out. Well once again that's not the end. Today in my car I drove by the woods and right in the exact spot where this creature began to run, or crawl into the woods, there was a balloon floating there. WTF I don't know if that can be a coincidence. I'm not entirely sure what the creature was, I've read people suggesting anywhere from a skinwalker to a crawler. This incident occurred during the winter of 2018. I'm a drawbridge operator located outside of a busy vacation town in Maryland's eastern shore on the Chesapeake Bay. During the summer, the bridge opened up quite a bit when a vessel was making its way either in from or out to the ocean. We tried not to disrupt the flow of traffic too much, so we would batch the request together and open the bridge every 20 minutes or so. There's a Coast Guard station near the bridge and perimeter is heavily fenced off. 
Apparently, they took trespassing incidents seriously. The winter traffic was minimal and the bridge might only open three or four times a day to accommodate the few commercial fishermen in the area. It was a very cold winter day in January when this incident took place. I had just started my shift. I was on nights for the next two weeks I was going over the previous operator's log notes. On the outbound log, I noticed that the big Coast Guard cutter, along with a bunch of their smaller boats and the two tugs that they had had come through the bridge. I was a little bit of a surprise as it would take a few dozen people to man all of those craft, and it being winter that was quite unusual. There had been no May Day or distress calls broadcast, so I figured that the Coast Guard conducted some kind of a drill or exercise. Later into my shift, and for some unknown reason, I missed a first call over the radio. As soon as I realized it, I asked for them to repeat their message. It was the captain of that big Coast Guard cutter. I was told that the bridge needed to be opened in exactly 13 minutes, and then it would need to stay open until I was given directions to lower it. This wouldn't have been an issue since fewer than six cars had crossed the bridge all night, but military and law enforcement were entitled to passage through the canal as they needed it. They called in with the ET, and so when the time got close, I logged the communication and I opened the bridge. Looking out over the water, I could start to see the bow lights of a small fleet of ships. It would end up being six in total, including the cutter, two tugboats, and three other small craft. The smaller vessels were paced out about 500 feet behind the cutter. Directly behind the cutter were the two tugboats almost side by side. The operator room was about 70 or 80 feet away from where the bridge opened, but there was a camera system which constantly recorded the area around and beneath the bridge. As the cutter passed beneath the bridge and passed one of the cameras, I could make out a few dozen people aboard the craft. I couldn't believe it at first, but about half of them were holding assault rifles. Then the tugboats came next. It was the middle of the night and water visibility here is poor but I could just make out the thick tow ropes trailing into the water behind the tugs, and attached to them was something unbelievably long. It was hard to tell, but whatever it was looked smooth with a greenish hue. I could see a scaly texture, and just by how much time it took for the creature to pass by the camera, I guessed that it was at least 200 feet long. I'm not even sure that I saw the end of it before what happened next. I'm not positive if it was because of the lights on the bridge or the underwater noise of the props bouncing off the nearby concrete, but the long thing started moving slowly. It was kind of swaying back and forth beneath the bridge. One of the guys on the tugboat started yelling out loud, and I could see the small craft was straining to maintain its straight path. The three smaller boats in the back started gunning in towards the tugs, kicking up tons of wake. The water started churning violently throughout the canal in an area a few hundred feet long. On camera, I could see that one of the tow cables from a tugboat snapped, and now that it was no longer restrained. The tug shot forward, slamming into one of the bridge pilings. I heard a quick round of pops followed by another, and I ran over to the door of the office and pushed it open. From my vantage point, I could see the small boats in the rear of the convoy speeding up to the tugs, but giving the erupting water a wide berth. Suddenly, several of the guys started shooting at that long creature in the water. The other tug, now bearing the full burden, was getting dragged across the surface. At one or two points, it looked like it might even dip beneath the water. The cutter was trying hard to come around, but the bridge didn't give it any room. It was hard to tell how it happened, but somehow the line from the other tug snapped just as a massive snake-like tail erupted out of the water near one of the smaller boats, slamming down on the edge of it. This caused it to tip. There was a minute of total chaos. A few of the crew were floating in the water. The gunshots stopped, but the shouts continued for at least a minute longer. One of the other boats went to pick up the floating crew of the tipped boat, and the other craft fell back into the loose semi-formation. The convoy then headed in the direction of the Coast Guard station. The creature or whatever it was didn't resurface again. I dropped the bridge and I just plopped into my seat at the desk. I was trying to figure out what had happened. A few minutes later, a black SUV drove over the bridge and stopped right in front of the operating room. 
Two men got out of the vehicle and they walked right in without knocking. One was wearing a U.S. Coast Guard uniform and carrying an assault rifle. The other man was wearing a style of uniform that I didn't recognize. This man introduced himself as a U.S. Navy captain name withheld. He told me to recount the events that I had just witnessed. So I did. He then asked a bunch of questions like if I had recorded anything or contacted anybody. I told him no, but that the bridge utilized a camera system. He finished by telling me that I was relieved for the night and that I should get a call from my supervisor soon that would confirm it. I didn't say anything else. I grabbed my stuff and I headed home. My supervisor did call me while I was driving. He sounded just as confused as me, but he told me that I had the next week off with double pay. He called back a few days later, and he told me that a new position for a higher paying administrative job at another location had just opened and refusal wasn't an option. So, here I am now working that new job. I don't know if I can get in trouble for repeating any of this, but I guess I will soon find out. I know it sounds like complete BS, but it really did happen. I live in Knightsville, South Carolina. The first incident happened on November 29, 2021 at around 11.30 p.m. I'm a single mom. I struggled to sleep that night with a severe migraine. I woke up from a dream and felt like there was something in my room. My daughter slept in my bed with me, and I hid us both under a blanket. She stayed asleep the whole night, including during this visitation. I was under the blanket when I suddenly felt a finger pressed down on my forehead between my eyes. It wasn't a small finger, it was as if a large man pressed his finger between my eyes. I started to panic and reluctantly reached out from the blanket to grab my cell phone beside my bed and called my mom. I was really scared and needed to talk to someone. My mom answered the phone, but the call abruptly ended. When I peeked out of my blanket, I saw something in front of me. I could tell something was in front of me, but it looked like a mirage. I couldn't see through it, but I could see something was there. I started panicking even more. I told myself that I was seeing things and reached my hand out to prove there was nothing there. I was wrong, and I grabbed onto a thin arm. That really freaked me out, so I again dialed my mom, but the phone was dead and wouldn't turn itself on. It was plugged into the charger wire, so this made no sense at all. Suddenly, I was back into a dream state, and a character from a TV show that I enjoyed was standing in front of me trying to calm me down. But I felt like this being was just appearing as something I liked. Then I fell asleep again and dreamed that my daughter and I were on a beach. I looked down into a tide pool on the beach and saw some red and blue tiger's eye stones, so I picked them up and put them in my pocket. When I woke up again, I checked my phone, and it had been charged and the time was 4 a.m. My migraine was completely gone. The next day, I felt weird and lethargic for the entire day. I believe that I was traumatized, but it was not scary. I didn't feel threatened or hurt. It just frightened me to wake up from a dream and see what was happening. I'm not sure how to explain it. However, as soon as the finger touched my forehead, I saw in my mind's eye that it was a long gray finger. Can you explain what happened to me? I later had a dream that an alien gray had come into my bedroom, but it was brief and I'm positive that it was just a dream. My daughter now has her own bedroom. Recently, she has described a green wavy man visiting her at night. She remembers three separate visitations. I set up a video camera in her room, but on the nights when she experiences visits, the camera doesn't record anything. She says that she isn't frightened by the visitor, but I'm very concerned. I harvested my first three bucks with my bow when I was 13 years old. I harvested them back to back three weekends in a row. I had an excellent teacher, my dad. I grew up in a small town called Morganza in Louisiana. Not far from there is where I learned to hunt on an island called Rakasi Island. I've also been a hunting guide and horseman for years in Colorado. I live in South Central Pennsylvania now after moving 16 years ago to Maryland. On March 5th, I'll be 51. 
I had numerous experiences with these beings. I'll throw out two or three short ones. At least I'll try. When I was 17 years old, I was in a tree stand, bow hunting about eight feet off the ground to get to this particular stand. This was off the Mississippi River across the canal. I could hear something huge running towards me. I could hear it when it jumped over the canal and landed. What scared me the most was how heavy it sounded, definitely bipedal, as if it were tapping on drums from a long distance. It just got louder and louder until it stopped in front of me about 50 yards in a huge thicket before getting close. I remember standing up on the deer stand to give me more height because I knew what was coming. It was going to be monumental. Through the thicket, I can see it silhouetted at about a 45 degree angle, at least four feet wide and eight to nine feet tall. I don't know why fear, I guess, but I immediately said, hey, there's someone hunting here. It immediately snorted and huffed twice or three times like it was trying to smell me. It started running again, then stopped again. Frightened out of my mind, I yelled out, that's a good way to get shot. I heard the last stick break and the last thud of its weight. I jumped out of the stand, hit the swamp behind me and waded through the alligator-infested waters to get to the levee to get back to town. The only way I could go back was through those woods. I knew that in less than a week I was moving to Maryland. Me and a buddy decided to camp out 200 yards or more from where that happened on the Mississippi River. We did this for four or five days. We were going to walk out along the Mississippi River one night and walk through the swamp and over the levee to a friend of mine's house to watch the movie Friday the 13th. Trying to keep it short, we'll meet two more of my friends at the house. We could hear them coming on the levee by three wheelers. We were just about to turn off the Mississippi River to go through the swamp when three bright lights appeared in the air. Everything fell silent, which is remarkable for a swamp at night. Yes, it was a UFO. Me and my buddy were standing there. I thought we would be abducted. This thing was 50 yards wide. Three glowing lights in a triangle formation, not shining on the ground but illuminating the treetops. It was on top of a levee 150 yards from us. It was not a light bouncing in the sky a mile away, not a glowing orb, but a huge UFO. I could have thrown a baseball and hit it. It turned in a circle and soared up about 50 feet and soared straight up like a lightning bolt. Some people claim that sometimes when Bigfoot sightings occur, there are UFO sightings nearby. But this is where things get weird. Yes, I believe in Bigfoot 100%. It is my hope that I will never see one again. 100% I believe in UFOs and hope I don't encounter one again. I can't even tell these stories to my best friend without ridicule. I thought it would be funny if one could just walk up and smack the hell out of him while he hunted. I think there's something more sinister in the woods. Of all the stories I've heard of Bigfoot, I've never heard one make noise in another story like the one did with me. I'm wondering if it was a dogman. I did not see a snout nor a clear view of the face either. I have one that a friend shared with me and a few encounters I have heard about in my area. I also have had some weird things that have happened to me in the woods over the last few years. My name is Will. No one should feel the shame for experiencing something strange in the woods. I have a dogman story. One of my good friends shared with me. Our friend grew up here in Maryland with me and I've known her since high school. She lives out of state now, but when she visits, we always exchange hiking stories and things we see out in the woods. Her job involves her being out in the woods for days at a time, so she is very familiar with all the things out in nature. One day we're talking about weird stuff we have seen and heard in the woods. She told me something that shocked me. Let me preface this by saying she knows I'm interested in the Bigfoot topic and that I have experienced weird things so she felt comfortable telling me what happened to her. She told me while taking a trip to Southern Maryland to visit a college campus with her mom, there's a spot in the road that people apparently see the ghost of a Civil War soldier cross the road. As they're getting close to the spot, she said that a giant black dog ran across the road and in front of the car on all fours. She told me the dog's back was five feet off the ground. 
She said it happened so fast that her mind didn't register what had happened until they're further down the road. She asked her mom if she saw it too, and she had no idea what she was talking about. If I'm not mistaken, I think she got her mom to drive back to the spot where it crossed, and she saw nothing. The crazy part of the story is I have never mentioned to her that people see these dogman cryptids. I completely trust her and believe her story. I showed her some pictures of dogmen I've seen seen on the internet, and that artists have drawn. She immediately pointed to one that looked like a black German shepherd. There's a river I go hiking along that has some terrifying encounters with the creature that looks like a hyena with a lion's mane. I pray to God before I go hiking here that I do not run into this thing. I haven't had any gut feelings telling me to leave or anything like. Therefore, I still go out doing what I love. Apparently, back in year 2003, men were wading in the river while fishing. One day they went around a bend and saw this hyena-type dogman in the river, and it was drowning a deer. Then it apparently bluff charged the three men, then scooped up the deer with one arm and walked away into the woods on two legs. Travel further south down this river someone else was apparently chased on their dirt bike by another hyena-type dogman, and this happened only a few years ago. I wonder if it was the same one. It seems like if you follow this river north, Bigfoot encounters happen near this wildlife refuge. I recently heard of a sighting where one of these things grabbed someone and the guy passed out from fear. This apparently happened just a few miles away from where I'm sitting right now in an upper middle class area that is highly populated. And there aren't that many areas that have woods anymore because of more houses being built. I personally believe their stories. There's a lot of reports of these things in Maryland. If you're interested, Google Dwayo. The year was 2019. I was getting home from my shift at the local grocery store around 11.30 p.m. I had to open the store in the morning and get up at 5 a.m., so I decided to stay up. I came inside the house, locked up, and turned on the lights in the kitchen. I decided to make coffee to keep myself awake. As I was filling the pot with water when something in the kitchen window caught my eye, a face, pressed against the glass, wide-eyed and grinning. There it was again, the skinman. It had stood up on a railing on our back porch and leaned onto the window. I screamed, spilling water everywhere. It seemed startled and dropped from its perch, hitting the porch with a thud. It ran away, or so I thought. I ran around the house making sure everything was locked, including the windows. As I did so, I saw the large bushes on the side of the house rustle violently. It seemed to follow me from window to window. I ran into my office on the basement floor. It had a window just above ground level. I shut the shade and quivered in my desk chair. It must have seen the light from my office because it paced back and forth in front of it for about two hours breathing heavy, raspy breaths. I eventually fell asleep. I almost skipped work that morning because I didn't want to leave the house, but I decided I wanted to get as far away from whatever it was for as long as possible, so I ended up going. I now have a constant fear of looking out windows at night and compulsively check the locks on my doors before bed. I can't imagine this ever being seen. But a month ago I finished a trip where I rode a motorcycle from Sydney to London most nights, I slept on the side of the road. This including sleeping in a goal in Boloistan where Pakistan meets Afghanistan and Iran and many nights on the Syrian snowed in border of Iran. Anyway, one night I was camped out on the south coast of Turkey, enjoying the warmth of clear blue sea. I was roasting some fresh fish over a fire and drinking cheap wine. I had not spoke to anyone really for days beyond some limited Turkish to acquire wine and fuel. Anyway, I pissed on the fire to put it out and turned on my headlamp. Before I got into my swag, this is the Australian name for a bedroll or tent. There were these two super reflective eyes. Just the Chester cat almost. It was so incredibly spooky because the light was not strong, and these eye were a bit of a distance I could not see anything but these two eyes, just floating in otherwise complete darkness. I felt cold in a way that I had not since I squat camped in several feet of snow in Iran. 
I threw a rock at these eyes, just to get rid of them. The eyes didn't move at all as my rock vanished into the darkness. They just kept looking at me. In this darkness, alone, if it was like a raven situation, I became obsessed with these two eyes. I threw another rock. The eyes vanished. I relaxed. A few minutes later, just before I pulled my bedroll over me, the eye reappeared. So much closer this time. So very, very close. It's just a cat, I told myself repeatedly. How the F are you so scared of a cat in this part of the world? You have ridden this shitty bike across part of the world that people have never even heard of. It's just a cat. I finally managed to go off to sleep. With this cat watching me. From 18 months of sleeping illegally on the side of the road, this was by far the worst night's sleep I have ever had.